Our uh, first speaker of the evening is a software engineer and a private pilot. Please welcome Andy Fowler. All right, quick programming note, it says 60 seconds, and my original plan was to tell you how to land an airplane if you're in a 737 and the pilots aren't around and it got a little morbid. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the time talking about why I like flying little planes. I learned to fly two years ago and it's the most exciting thing I've ever done. And it's where I spend all of my time now and uh, it's something I always wanted to do since I was a little kid. I uh, went to career day at the airports and this is a little plane I learned to fly in. It's a Cessna 152. It flies 100 miles an hour. There's just two seats in it. Usually it's a student pilot and an instructor. It's a little um, 90 horsepower engine. It was built in 1979. And if you look inside of it, it looks like an airplane that was built in 1979. All of these gauges are, most of them are powered by uh, the vacuum from the engine, there's no GPS or anything like that, just some old analog radios, and uh, you've got all these gauges to tell you how fast you're going, which way is up, and this kind of thing. Um, but the exciting thing about learning to fly is you learn beyond, uh, stuff beyond that. You learn about radios, you learn about navigation, you learn about the weather and how the clouds you saw today, those big wispy ones up high, and how they kind of curl, those are showing that there's really strong winds uh, up high in the atmosphere. Um, so learning to fly, you pick up all of these different things. Uh, but this is some advice I got from the FAA inspector <laughs> when, I got, uh, when I took my check ride, and that's pushing the yoke, houses get larger, pulling back, houses get smaller. And uh, um, <laughs> the point I want to get across there is that it's actually something that's very accessible to everyone. If you can drive a car, you can learn to fly an airplane. But it took humanity a long time to learn to fly, and the Wright brothers spent 10 years in Kitty Hawk trying to just fly these little gliders and control them. And they saw that when birds turn, they bank and they turn their wings to the side. And when they tried to do that in a little airplane, the plane would skid into the ground, so they had to put a tail on the back of it. And they spent all this time, and you know, in 1909, they flew 800 feet. And Ann Arbor's connection to the Wright brothers, this is a Model B Wright brothers plane, and it was donated to some students at the University of Michigan in 1915 by some Detroit industrialists. Unfortunately, a couple days after it was donated to these students, they crashed into Barton Pond. <laughs> the student pilot was okay, and he went on to become the uh, first aeronautical engineering student. This is F.E. Loudy. He was the university and the country's first aeronautical engineering student. And this is a, a letter he wrote to the uh, Wright brothers asking for a new engine to put in the museum after he put the one in Barton Pond. Um, and since then, students have been organizing into flight clubs. This is a black and white photo from the 40s of uh, um, students organizing and flying and participating in competitions. You can see some photos that are clearly from the 70s and from the 60s. This is a newspaper, Michigan Daily, uh, April 1st, 1982. They were participating in flower bombing competitions with other schools, not just spot landings. So what flower bombing is, is you take a little brown paper bag, you fill it with flour, you fly 500 feet over the runway, and you drop it out the window and see what you can hit. And what's exciting is that we're still doing this in Ann Arbor today. The Flying Club, I'm a part of the Michigan Flyers. We've organized this event a couple of times, and it's a whole lot of fun. We've set out this trash can here over a grass one way, runway. You fly 500 feet, and you get a lot of people involved, and uh, it's a lot of fun. This club has been around since 1969. We've got uh, over 120 flying members. Um, we've got instructors that went on to become Blue Angels pilots. Uh, we've got an instructor now who flew the DC-9 for the Red Wings. And uh, it, it's a great diverse group of undergrads, graduate students, retirees, young professionals like me. So what does it take to get started? Well, to learn to fly, I generally say it takes around six or $7,000. But you can spread this out over a long time. If you spread it out over two years, it's basically a car payment every month. And it's a whole lot more fun than driving. Um, and uh, the cool thing is that you can actually get started flying by yourself even before you have your license. You'll be soloing and flying around after just 15 or 20 hours with an instructor. You'll fly out to Grand Rapids, you'll fly up to Lansing or to Saginaw, and after about uh, 50 or 60 hours, you'll fly with the FAA and uh, become a private pilot. The way you get started is you take a discovery flight. You call up a flying club or an FBO at the Ann Arbor Airport. So you want to take a discovery flight or an introductory lesson. It's like 60 or $70. You actually get to take off yourself. You'll get to make some turns. You'll fly with an instructor, and it's a whole lot of fun. Something I love about um, flight instruction is that it's kind of this one-on-one -on -one nature. You don't do it in a classroom like a lot of other things. It's kind of like music lessons, right? Uh, this is a friend of mine, Andy Blyler, after his first uh, solo. And uh, you know, you're sitting right next to an instructor who's coaching you and fixing things when they go wrong. This is what it looks like when you're going into land at a grass field. And when, early on in my training, I, I put up the flaps a little too early and we started heading towards some trees. And flight instruction is one of those things where you're kind of paying someone to sit next to you and save your life a couple of times. So uh, I had uh, my instructor, you know, took the controls and fixed everything. As a private pilot, you can fly almost anywhere, with the exception of like the White House and over a few places like that. But um, people are always surprised <laughs> to hear that you can actually fly almost anywhere. You can fly at the Detroit River and see Windsor off to your right and uh, the Rensen and Ford Field off to your left. You can fly out to Chicago and see Lakeshore Drive. You can fly at night. 
something that's great about it and uh, uh, that I love is that when you're flying, you kind of have to leave all your stresses on the ground, right? You, if you're worried about work or worried about things at home, you're kind of not thinking about flying an airplane, which is pretty important. Um, and this is my favorite uh, photograph of aviation. I, I get this expression, expression on my face when I'm flying, and I see it in my friends' faces, uh, just because it's something that's uh, so enjoyable. I hope my passengers don't get that uh, look on her face that she has, but um, I think everyone should learn to fly. Give it a shot. Take a discovery flight and uh, see what you think. Thanks. Yeah.